it's Lucy. So I don't like to talk about myself too much on this channel, but I've been asked by several people what I did in the year out between my master's and my PhD, because they're thinking of doing the same. And every time I describe the year to people, I realize it was one of the best things I ever did for so many reasons. So I thought I would really briefly share that year here as a kind of case study about what I did and what I got out of it. The reason I took a year out is because I never really believed I would get the marks to apply for a PhD. So when June 2015 rolled around and I got my master's results, I realized, oh hey, I can do this. By which time, of course, all of the courses starting in September had already been filled. The first thing I wanted to do was use that time to make my CV stand out. So I had my degree, which was of course the most important thing, but other than that, I didn't really have anything to prove that I was interested in my subject. So I had no academic summer work or no relevant extracurricular activities or internships and the only jobs I'd ever had were of the waitressing and bartending sorts. Up until applications were due in, which was January in the UK, I wanted to use this time to get as much experience in research as I could. So. This is what I set out to do. I asked my master's supervisor if he knew anyone who needed any work doing because, well, he had all the contacts in my field, they were his colleagues, and he was kind enough to put me in touch with an academic who was working on the Mars rover at the time. This guy didn't have any projects going at the moment, but he did know someone who did, and that was how I came to be working in London for a month mapping hazards on Mars, which tied in perfectly with my skill set. Things were starting to feel properly exciting now. I'd been in my hometown and then in Durham for my degree for so long that having the freedom to just up and move to the other end of the country was so exhilarating, it was so exciting. It was one of my first ever times in London too, so getting the tube every day was so exciting and the bustling streets were so exciting and I felt so proud of myself for being there. Most importantly though, I'd got myself the dream research experience. This meant I now could say I'd worked in another university, this meant I had a referee from a different university, and this meant he could talk about how I was competent in a professional academic workplace. Searching for the position after that became a whole lot easier now I had experience under my belt. And I was also more confident in myself, and slowly as I applied to more and more jobs I got better at both finding them and the actual applications themselves. I scoured indeed.com, I scoured planetary science newsletters, university websites, ads in the backs of scientific magazines, and I applied in droves. Most I never heard back from, but I did get to the final round of applications to go live in Antarctica for six months with the British Antarctic Survey, so you never know where this stuff will take you. Shortly after working in London, I moved to Leicester for another short-term research position. This time it was a proper job, this time I had a great hourly wage, and I was moving to a new city, and it was another new exciting phase. This role wasn't as aligned with my research interests as before, but it came with a lot more responsibility, there were new skills that I'd learned, and overall these were all things that I could talk about in an interview, so it was all good stuff. By this point it was winter, and I was starting to think about my applications. For the last few months I'd been emailing academics about potential positions, about projects I'd come across, and I'd had limited success. I'll make a proper video on this sometime, because I honestly emailed about 40 academics and maybe got 10 responses, but eventually I had a list of universities and their respective academics that I wanted to apply to, and now all that was left to do was apply. I went to live home for two reasons at this point. For one, because I wanted to just focus on my PhD applications, and for another, my mum had just got seriously ill, so I was more than happy to go home and look after her. My CV was far stronger now. I had had time and done research at different universities, I had referees from different backgrounds and different institutions, I had research experience, I'd presented at a conference in the January, and I held myself taller because I was prouder. By spring 2016, I was thinking, what am I going to do with the second half of my year? Now all my applications are in and I'm just waiting to hear back. Now was the time for me to earn as much money as I could, because I was going to be starved of that for the next four years. So I got a job in a bank in Bristol. Why Bristol? It's where my boyfriend was. Why a bank? They were the first ones to hire me and they were going to pay well. The next three months were dire at this awful office job. Nine to five, corporate slave, smart office clothes, half hour lunch break. It was dire, it was not my scene. But it got me some money, I got to live with my boyfriend, and I had a little secret to keep me warm, and that was that I'd been accepted onto a PhD program at last. I had about a month after the job ended before my PhD began, and in that time I wrote up my masters as a paper, which really I should have done much sooner, but 
yeah, so what? And um, it got me back into the academic swing of things, which was good. Before I knew it, I was packing and getting ready for a September start at my new course in Oxford for a PhD in Earth Sciences. And there you have it. That is about everything I crammed into my year out between my master's and my PhD. Four cities, three jobs, one fully recovered mum, and one very happy PhD student. If you're thinking of taking a year out before committing to a PhD, then I really couldn't recommend it more. This was the year when I stopped being a student and I became an adult. And by the end of it, I knew that I definitely, definitely, definitely wanted to do a PhD because it would definitely be preferable to making spreadsheets day after day for horrible bank managers. I really hope this video helps anyone who was in a similar position to me four years ago. And if you'd like more insight into the life of a PhD student, then please do subscribe and check out the rest of my channel. My name is Lucy Kizik. I am a final year PhD student at the University of Oxford. And thank you for watching. Take care.